one is watching this movie correctly. I'm the only person watching this movie the right way. Did dye my hair again and I accidentally threw out a pair of pants I really loved and I'm in a really bad mood today. We're gonna talk about Scott Pilgrim. I have only watched this movie. I have watched it several times. I've never read the comics. I also didn't finish the show. This is coming purely from someone who has only really seen the movie. I was probably like 16. Scott Pilgrim's been on my like favorite movie list. And originally it was just cause it was like fun and it was quirky and it was so like crazy. And that is still one of the reasons why I love it. It has this sense of humor that no movie I've ever seen has matched. Now I like it more because it's actually like relating to a really weird specific aspect of my life. Not in a good way. Also, this isn't scripted. I'm just like, I just want to sit down and film this. I've been really busy. Something that not that many people like to acknowledge in this movie is that Scott's like actually a really, really bad person. And with the reboot of the TV show, I've seen more people talk about this. I'm going to talk about it from my perspective specifically. To talk about this, we need to go over this very specific term in pop culture called the manic pixie dream girl for people who don't know the manic pixie dream girl this concept of like a very cheerful happy unique woman the main character is like someone who's really grumpy and he's going through stuff and she just changes his life she might have colored hair she might like to go dance in the rain she might have trauma but we don't talk about that because the movie's not about her it's about him and this does happen in real life too i've had this happen several times a guy will be like really infatuated with the idea of me and then they realize that I don't really live up to that idea they created in their head and sometimes they leave very respectfully and normally and it just doesn't work out and sometimes I almost have to get a restraining order like that one time everyone kind of manic pixie dream person someone to an extent I think that's super normal that like if you're just liking someone and you don't know them that much you're gonna build up this idea of them in your head you might realize that you don't actually really like them when you get to know them and you can leave respectfully or sometimes you might just have a really unrealistic expectation of like what someone's supposed to be like and you might still need to leave that relationship but you should probably stop putting super unrealistic expectations on a people. Um, and then there's the unhealthy way where when someone's not meeting that expectation, you try to change them and put them into that box of the Manic Pixie Dream Girl. Ramona Flowers is the Manic Pixie Dream Girl. There are so many men who will be like, where's my Ramona Flowers? Greg, you couldn't handle Ramona Flowers. That's the thing is this movie's really clear about what it's about and so many people, I'm not trying to be sexist, Men specifically don't understand it. So obviously we all know the movie opens up with Scott Pilgrim is dating a high school. He's 22, she's 17. The most they've done is hold hands. They're not really dating, but he is using for her for attention. Even if she was 18, it still wouldn't be healthy or good because he is very clearly older than her mentally and he is just using her for attention. He even says that he just likes being around her because she talks about yearbook and school drama and it's just simple and it's easy. That's already setting up that Scott's not really a good person but Scott's also not very mature because he doesn't want a genuine relationship. He just wants simple and easy and attention. Once he meets Ramona, he immediately decides that she's the girl of his dreams but he still won't break up with his high school girlfriend because he likes the attention still and he feels bad breaking up with her. Also, she's so unimportant to him that he constantly forgets that she's even like there. He finally does end up going out with Ramona. Literally the first thing he does on their date is show up late because he assumes she's too cool to be there on time. That's literally like the first thing he does to her is he assumes her personality. He sees Ramona who's got the colored hair and she dresses kind of edgy and he immediately just assumes what she's gonna be like. Not liking her, but liking the concept of her that he created in his head. After she dyes her hair, he has a breakdown because he says that she's fickle and she changes too much and she's not gonna end up liking him in a couple weeks. And that's like, really weird. There is kind of like a stigma with people that get a lot of tattoos and change their hair aren't stable and I think that's stupid. But again, he's not really seeing Ramona. 
He's starting to see her a little bit, but he is mostly just assuming what she is. While he's juggling Ramona and Knives at the same time, everyone in his life, his sister, his roommate, his friends, are really mad at him. They know he's in the wrong. They're actively trying to sabotage him by putting him in situations where he has to own up to his decisions. And he still doesn't because he waits a really long time to break up with his high school girlfriend. And he also never tells Ramona that he was dating a high schooler while he was dating her. As the movie goes on and we get to the fourth evil ex, Scott starts getting really frustrated with like the fact that Ramona's dated so many people and they were all kind of crazy. And the thing is, is that he knew previously she had seven evil exes and he is validly upset because he keeps like almost dying. Also just the fact that he's getting frustrated with her now because now he's actually physically being around them and seeing them. And to be fair, one of them was someone who also stole his last ex-girlfriend who he is not over at all. It's the fact that she has baggage and she's like a real human being and this is kind of the point when he's starting to see that and he's getting frustrated with her. Scene where he's at the concert and Knives is just staring at him even though they broke up and the fact that the um, anthem of a 17 year old girl is playing while he just ignores her and walks around her. I don't know what it is, but that's like, that's a core memory scene for me. That's me. The reason why this movie's gotten so relatable is I've been Knives, but I've also been Ramona. Like, I honestly think another thing this movie does really good is it does a good job of like portraying heartbreak when you're 17 because she didn't really like actually love Scott. She also just loved the idea of Scott and not necessarily in a healthy way, but in a way that was like less Less damaging to him it was more damaging to herself and that's normal because she's 17 so she has an excuse to do that because this is like the first guy she's been with Scott doesn't have that excuse knives ends up blaming Ramona and again, it's not Ramona's fault. It's Scott's fault. Scott also never gives Knives closer, which is why she's like literally stalking him. The thing is, is I don't really understand why they even help him at the end after like they both find out he was cheating on them. I don't even think he really deserves his character arc, honestly. Knives has a good character arc though. The entire movie, like after she figures out Ramona's the reason he broke up with her, she feels uncool and she tries to dye her hair and change herself and all that stuff. And then it ends with her telling him that she was too cool for him anyway. I love Knives because I was Knives and I've also been Ramona and both of it sucks but I think that they handled Knives character arc really well. In the very end Scott does accept Ramona for who she is as a person but the thing is is I don't feel like Ramona should accept him back. The reason why I want to talk about this video is I do get really frustrated that so many people are like where is my Ramona flower? Because I think the thing is is that in this movie they don't really understand what's really going on. They just see like nerdy twinkie guy gets goth girl. They don't understand that in the very end the reason why he got her is because he learned to accept himself first and be okay with himself so he stopped putting those weird expectations on Ramona stopped looking to women for validation guys don't really want to see that they just and I'm not saying I know like I don't have to say this but I know I do I'm not saying all guys I know you're not I'm talking about a very specific type of guy okay which is Scott Pilgrim but like those specific guys don't see that like in the end he ends up with Ramona because he changes himself they just see little twink guy is a horrible person throughout this whole movie and then he still gets the goth girl and I don't even think he should. It took him way too long to see Ramona as like a human being, not just this thing he made up in his head that she's this like edgy goth girl. And she's not even goth. Like men call me goth. I'm not goth. You you don't, the real goths would terrify you. That was just like my little dumb rant about Scott Pilgrim and how I think it's the greatest movie ever made, but not for the reason it was made. It's because it's an amazing depiction of being played by a really crappy guy in either the aspect where you aren't good enough or you just get this really unrealistic standard put on you of what he wants you to be i think this is more of like the feminist movie than the barbie movie was honestly